Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'm planting up my kitchen window box with some gorgeous plants, most of which are perennial, all of which prefer a shady spot. And shade containers can be a little bit tricky to get a really good combination. I'm going to be relying mostly on foliage here, um, different textures, different colors. I do have one flower that I think will be re uh, really pretty that I'm going to repeat. Now I am going to stuff this thing to within an inch of its life. Like this is going to be really pretty, I think right from the gate but there's a couple reasons why that's going to work. First of all, I'm using mostly perennials, which they don't tend to put on a ton of growth in their first year being planted. These will end up out in the landscape later on anyway. Um, and shade perennials, even less growth than your sun perennials that you put out. Um, so I, everything should be really happy in this space. And you can tell it's a bright location. It's not deep, dark shade, but it only receives about 10 minutes of sun first thing in the morning. So it's just a really interesting spot. So let me go through the type of plants that we have here. First off, I do have a window box full of soil already. I need to put in my continuous release plant food and then we'll be ready to plant. But I'm going to alternate as my centerpiece these two plants right here. So this is called, if we get in close here so you can see the detail, a Brilliance Autumn Fern. It's a Dryopteris. It is a zone four through, no, five through nine. So I t technically could leave this in the window box and it should survive our winters and come back but look at the texture here. Isn't that just the most beautiful thing? And it's new growth when it comes out is like this beautiful orangey tinge to it. And even more so if you put it at the higher end of the light spectrum. So typically, you know, this type of shade plant, they want four hours or less of sun. So if it gets closer to the three to four hours of sun side of things, it'll be a little bit more colorful. I'm not super worried about this in this case. I just want this kind of texture. The next one here is a Cucarella called Fun and Games Red Rover. We have highlighted this in a video, but it's been, oh boy, I don't even know. It's been a couple years ago. We planted some of these in my parents' garden and they're still there. We showed them in a tour this week, but they are a zone four through nine and they grow like this is almost their max height right here, um, about six to eight inches. And then they throw up these gorgeous flower spikes, which I don't mind. I mean, I know this is a window box. I typically don't like to plant things that are going to shroud a window or block the view, or even if it's not a usable window, I don't like that look because it looks like it's not proper. But these right here, you can see through really well because they're so airy, very low maintenance plants. Like there's no maintenance on this one. The only maintenance on this is maybe deadheading these spent blooms, which you can follow them down like this one here, I'm just following it down to its base and you can just pop it off with your fingers, super easy. And there's only two spent ones on here. And then after that, after they're done blooming and you've popped all of these off, then that's it for the season. But the leaves, look at this. I love how deeply lobed they are. They are so interesting to look at. And the undersides are beautiful too, so it doesn't matter which angle you're looking at this plant. I mean, this plant could be a total mess and you would never know it because it's so colorful and beautiful. Um, the next one here, this is our only annual. You could dig this up and save it if you wanted to, but this is an Illumination Apricot Begonia. And I think that when you put these together, like the colors here and the color and the new growth there, I think that's a really pretty blend. And then our last one is our trailer, and this is a Glacier Ivy. So it is a perennial. This will last in this container. All the other ivies I put in containers are the Hayrax last year, window boxes, not Hayrax. They all survived and came back. But I think that this little pop of white in the leaves will be really interesting and it'll set it apart from everything in here. So the only thing left to do is to plant this up. And you can see that I did leave my window boxes white because I'm way too chicken to paint them black. <laughs> I'm just too nervous that if I painted them black, it would kind of like, it, things would disappear. I don't know. Anyway, we're just gonna go with white again this year. So now I'm gonna plant and then we'll take a look at what it looks like when I'm all done. All right, so I just wanted to cut for a quick second to show you what this window box looks like without any blooms. I mean, technically the hookers have blooms, but I'm talking like any other plants that have more colorful blooms. 
because honestly, this looks beautiful and simple and classic without anything else in it. And I'm sure some of you are probably like, stop, don't put a single other plant in that window box. It's perfect the way it is. I mean, of course I'm gonna put blooms in because I mean, these are so pretty and I think we'll really enjoy looking at these, but I just wanted to stop and show you at this stage what it looks like. All right, now I'm gonna plant my flowers. window box with all the blooms which I think looks really pretty it brings that pop of color um, and a little bit more depth and interest of course to the arrangement and I don't know what I was thinking when I started to plan this whole thing out I got three hookerellas and three ferns thinking I would repeat but if I would have done six instead of five I would have started with a hookerella and ended up with a fern on the other side so and you're gonna see the aftermath of my project right here <laughs> total mess to clean up I ended up with an extra fern um, so this one will go out in the landscape where these are going to actually end up going later on in the season now, um, which will be kind of fun to see that kind of texture there. But yeah, so like kind of keep that in mind when you're planning stuff out. I mean, do what you want and what makes you happy to look at, but I like this kind of odd number as my centerpiece. I think it turned out really pretty. So there's six of the begonias, one, two, three, four, five of the ivies, two ferns and three hookerellas. So this certainly could be scaled down or up depending on what kind of planter you're doing. I mean, if you're doing a round container, you could do one fern, one hookerella, one begonia, one ivy, just four plants. And I think it would be very, very beautiful. Um, in terms of maintenance, super, super easy. Like I talked about before, begonias do not have to be deadheaded. They will keep on producing blooms throughout the season without deadheading. Um, the only thing that needs anything are the hookerella, hookerella blooms that you can pop off very easily and see how like unobtrusive they are to the view. They're just so light and airy that you can see through them and it still looks really good and like it's not blocking any kind of view. Um, they are on a drip system already. There's five or six emitters in this six foot window box. Um, this is where the water comes from right here. It's tapped into our irrigation system. Right now we're, we can run the system about every three days or so to keep them happy in here. Shade planters typically don't need near as much water as sun planters do. So a lot easier maintenance there. Um, fertilizer, I worked in the continuous release, so that will last a while, um, but we do usually keep our annual containers, even if they have perennials in them, on a weekly water-soluble fertilizing schedule because the soil reservoir isn't enormous and whatever nutrients they get is pretty much from whatever we give, give them. Um, even if you start with fresh soil, I mean, that nutrients only last for so long. So you do wanna keep fertilizing in mind. That's very important to the product productivity and health of your plants. Um, so anyway, I mean, seeing this, how it turned out and just knowing how little I'm going to have to do to keep this happy kind of makes me want to repeat this in the rest of the window boxes, which I haven't really planted yet. These right here are actually plants from last year. <laughs> so, um, uh, I've got Jack of Diamonds or Queen of Hearts. I can't remember which variety I use. Brunnera, which needs to be groomed. They are blooming though. Look at that. I've got some Duckfoot Ivy and then a Ruby Glow Euphorbia. I popped the other Ruby Glows out and used them in another container. Um, but I think we might do a video where I just kind of go with this and try to make something pretty out of what's left over. Uh, because that's one of the beauties of using perennials. You can either use them in your landscape or winter them over like this. Um, and then you have plants from year to year. And it might be a little bit more interesting trying to get them to work in balance and stuff depending on how they came back. But I think that'll make for kind of a fun project. So anyway, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed seeing this window box come together. I hope it inspired you and maybe gave you a few ideas um, about different plant combinations and, and uh, container ideas. So anyway, thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye.